Hey everyone, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. On today's broadcast, the Boy Scouts of America have recently introduced a resolution about their membership stating that they will accept young men into their organization regardless of their sexual orientation or preference. Yep, this has stirred quite a firestorm among church people. As you know, the Southern Baptist Convention met this week, and they decided to send a loud and clear message to the Scouts that I can't hardly decipher. I mean, they basically said that they want to continue their relationship with the Boy Scouts, but they're telling all their individual churches that if they want to drop them, drop them. Uh, so I don't understand what that really even means. The Methodist Church, meanwhile, has sent a public message to the Boy Scouts saying, hey, if your Baptist group drops your troop, give us a call. We'd love to have you uh, in our organization. We believe in you, Scouts. So you can see that different church groups are responding in different ways to this new resolution that the Boy Scouts have. So today's question is going to be, what is the real issue here and how should the church respond? What is the real issue and how should the church respond? So I want to look a little bit at who the Boy Scouts of America are to begin with. You know, the Boy Scouts were founded in 1910 by W.D. Boyce, and they were founded with this charter statement. They exist to teach patriotism, courage, self-reliance, and kindred values. All Boy Scouts take an oath to uphold this charter statement. Their oath goes like this. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, and to obey the Scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Yeah, morally straight. That's an interesting term in light of this controversy right now, isn't it? Let's just be really clear. The Scouts are a religious values-based organization. They are not the church, the body of Christ. They're committed to the values found in religion, but not committed to a particular brand of religion. They're committed to upholding morality, but they're not committed to the gospel. Okay, They are a values organization, but they are not the church, the body of Christ. So being that they are different than the church, their value system is going to be somewhat different than the church. Their stance on sexual activity within their organization is very clear. They clearly state that any type of sexual activity among their organization, among teenage boys, is wrong, no matter whether it's homosexual activity or heterosexual activity. It violates, in their words, it violates the virtues of scouting. At the same time, their stance on homosexuality as an issue at large is pretty ambiguous. Here's their stance. They say that the Boy Scouts of America does not have an agenda on the matter of sexual orientation, and resolving this complex issue is not the role of this organization, nor may any member use scouting to promote or advance any social or political position or agenda. So yeah, their stance is going to be different than the church's stance. So that's why this is a big deal to the Southern Baptist Convention. You see, the SBC charters a lot of individual scout troops. Yeah, that's the way it works. Each individual troop is chartered by an already existing community organization. Now, i got a graph here of chartering groups. The top ten chartering groups in America of scout troops are largely religious organizations. In fact, by far, the biggest group is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Huh. And there's a lot of other church groups that's, that, that charter them also. The Methodists, the Catholics, the Presbyterians, Lutherans, Baptists also. In fact, Baptists are kind of the smallest of the church groups that charter scout troops. But it's not just churches. There are non-religiously affiliated organizations that charter scout troops also. There's parent-teacher groups like PTAs, PTOs. There's citizens groups. And there are private schools that also charter scout troops. So uh, you can see that uh, this is a problem because the SBC believes that homosexuality is a sin. In Romans 1 and 2, you can find the answers about that. But the, the Scouts don't necessarily believe that. Now, the Charter does provide that each individual troop should and can uphold the values of the individual chartering organization. So you can see that this causes a little bit of tension here. Now listen, here's what really should be the case. The Church should see the Boy Scouts as a bridge between the Church 
and our communities. We should see the Boy Scouts as a connection point where we, the body of Christ, can leverage the amazing life skills that the Boy Scouts teach for the sake of the gospel. We should not see the Scouts as a church organization, but as a bridge into our community. Scouting should be a channel through which we can have influence in this world for Jesus. You see, kids all throughout this country desire to be part of something bigger than themselves. In fact, the number one psychological rule of teenagers is that they long to be identified as separate from their parents and with their peers. And scouting provides a great channel for that. It provides a great way for students to connect into a peer group, and they provide a great channel for religious organizations like churches to be able to funnel their beliefs and their teachings through their organization and into kids. Yeah, but clearly the SBC is, is worried that the Scouts are becoming a compromising, immoral group on this particular issue. Now, Yes, the Boy Scouts have been under extreme attack by the far left for several years now. They've had quite a few high-profile and very expensive lawsuits. And yes, the national leadership of the Boy Scouts haven't charted the clearest course. Uh, they have sent mixed messages, and I believe have allowed a little bit of mission drift in their organization. Sure, those things are true, and all of this combines to create the confusion that we currently have. So this membership resolution is kind of a big deal. What is the actual resolution? Well, I, I talked to uh, the people in charge there, and I got a copy of it. It's also available on their website, and here's the resolution says this, youth membership in the Boy Scouts of America is open to all youth who meet the specific membership requirements to join the Cub Scout, Boy Scout, Varsity Scout, Sea Scout, and Venturing programs. Membership in any program of the Boy Scouts of America requires the youth member to A, subscribe to and abide by the values expressed in the Scout Oath and Scout Law. B, subscribe to and abide by the precepts in the Declaration of Religious Principle as expressed in the phrase, duty to God. And C, demonstrate behavior that exemplifies the highest level of good conduct and respect for others and is consistent at all times with the values expressed in the Scout Oath and the Scout Law. No youth may be denied membership in the Boy Scouts of America on the basis of sexual orientation or preference alone. So we can see that this new resolution clearly does three things. Number one, it upholds the current standard of heterosexual-only leadership. They have long affirmed that they will not allow homosexual leaders in their organization, and this resolution upholds that. Number two, it, up it upholds the Scouts' declaration of religious principle. They state that they have a duty to God, and this keeps that duty to God. Number three, what this does, and here's the controversy, is that it denies discrimination based on sexual orientation or preference alone. In fact, their stance on homosexuality is pretty clear. Here's a quote from their website. While the BSA, the Boy Scouts of America, does not proactively inquire about sexual orientation of employees, volunteers, or members, we do not grant membership to individuals who are open or avowed homosexuals or who engage in behavior that would become a distraction to the mission of the Boy Scouts of America. So it's pretty clear here that their new stance is all about accepting everyone while teaching that not everything is acceptable. They're trying their best to be accepting of everyone while teaching that not everything is acceptable. And when churches get upset about this stance, I'm afraid we're getting the cart a little before the horse. Remember, we're, we're trying to connect to outsiders and trying to bring them on the inside. We're trying to use scouting as a channel to influence outsiders and hopefully lovingly bring them in to the body of Christ. That's what we want to do here. And I'm afraid that when we get upset about their stance here on this particular issue, that we're trying to get sanctification in someone's life before justification. What I'm trying to say is that the Church of America is in trouble today, and we're not going to win any friends by expecting people to come to us on our terms. 
we've got to be willing to take a step towards them. We've got to be willing to get out of our comfort zone a little bit and go to where they are, to speak their language, to understand their culture, to understand they come from broken families, and we've got to do whatever we can to make the gospel relevant to our community. That's what the Apostle Paul did. The Apostle Paul was all about making the gospel relevant, about speaking the language, knowing the culture, and stepping toward people instead of expecting them to step towards him. In fact, he wrote out his philosophy on this in his letter to the church at Corinth. He says this in 1 Corinthians 9. He says, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. So Paul was a big advocate of this particular stance. But Paul didn't dream it up. No, this idea is not Paul's idea, it's God's idea. Yeah, the thing is that God stepped towards me for my salvation. The Bible says that God demonstrates his love for me in that while I was still a sinner, Christ died for my sins. He took the step towards me rather than expecting me to come on his terms. We love to sing that old hymn, don't we? Just as I am without one plea, but that thy, thy blood was shed for me. Yeah, I, I am to have the same attitude that Jesus had. It's pretty clear in scripture that I must have the same attitude that Jesus had. It says in Philippians, though he was God, he did not think equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges and he took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. And when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and he died a criminal's death on a cross. Man, the Christian position ought to be one of humility, thinking of others as better than ourselves as trying to understand who they are, that they are outsiders and they don't understand the truth of the gospel, and so we ought to step towards them. So if you're a pastor of a church, I'm begging you, don't run and hide from this issue. But take a step towards our communities. Build a bridge to lost people rather than burn the bridges that we have. Do you have any questions? Do you have any comments? Do you have any thoughts of your own on this issue? Hit me up in the comment section. Let me know what you think. I'd love to have a dialogue with you. Until next time, God bless. I'll see you soon.